Hollywood sets the stage at Long Beach, California, seeking the title of Miss Universe, most beautiful girl in the world. This is exactly what's on the car. The Miss Universe beauty pageant has been going on for 67 years, and over time it has changed dramatically. By tracing its history and taking a closer look at its evolution, we can see a dramatic development on how society's perception of beauty has transformed and ultimately progressed. For those of you who aren't familiar with the competition, we'll get you caught up. The Miss Universe pageant is an annual international beauty pageant that is run by the United States-based Miss Universe organization. The show airs in 190 countries to an audience of around 500 million people and keeps getting more popular every year. It all began in 1951, after the winner of Miss Universe refused to wear a bathing suit made by Catalina Swimwear. The company responded by creating their own pageant, wherein contestants had to sport their design. In the first Miss Universe contest, only 30 women competed for the crown, and Armi Kusela of Finland ended up taking it home. She had to give up her title, however, when she got married. Did you know that to be a Miss Universe winner, you have to be single? That brings us to our next topic rules. To be a contestant, not only do you have to be single, but you're also not allowed to have been previously married. That includes being separated or having an annulment. You are also not allowed to have any children and cannot have been pregnant at any time, especially while competing. You must be 18 years old to compete and under the age of 27. If you are caught faking your age, you will be immediately taken out of the competition. Upon winning, Miss Universe must spend one year traveling overseas, giving interviews and promoting the pageant. The woman who gets the crown receives a cash prize allowance for her reign and often will win scholarships to schools, connections with modeling agencies, and countless beauty products, shoes, clothing, and fitness products. Though any country can compete, they have to pay a fee, which is why smaller countries are often not represented due to lack of funds. Contestants must compete in a swimsuit and evening gown competition. If you've seen Miss Congeniality, you'll remember Gracie Lou Freebush taking to the stage in a bikini and barely holding it together. In the early years, the contestants were judged in swimsuit and evening gowns only. It wasn't until 1960 that an interview portion was introduced and the women could represent themselves more fully. Over the years, more noticeable changes have been made. How our concept of beauty has changed. A couple differences in beauty standards that we can see shifted over time are height and age. In 1965, the winner of the crown measured 5 foot 4 inches, while in 2003, Amelia Vega won at 6 foot 1 inch. For age, in 1952, an 18-year-old won the crown, and in 1997, a 26-year-old did. While it's interesting to take note of these developments, what we really want to dive into is the history of racial representation in the show. For the first six years of the pageant, white women were the sole winners of the crown. It wasn't until 1957 that the first Latin American woman, Gladys Zender of Peru, won Miss Universe, and things started changing. People were beginning to see women represented that had never had the spotlight before. In the 1950s, actresses like Grace Kelly and Marilyn Monroe were seen on the cover of every magazine and were seen as the epitome of beauty. If you take a look at Miriam Stevenson and Hilevi Rombin, two women who won the Miss Universe prior to Gladys, you can see that the blonde bombshell look was highly sought after. If we compare a photo of these women to Gladi, we can see that society's idea of beauty was diversifying. In 1959, Akiko Hojima of Japan took the title, making her the first Asian woman to be crowned. This was significant because there was still a great deal of senseless racism towards Japanese people in America. So, to have an American-based company celebrating Akiko meant progress was being made. It wasn't until 1977 that the first woman of African descent took the title. Janelle Comision of Trinidad and Tobago became the first black woman to win the crown. During her reign, she was an advocate for black rights in countries where people of African ancestry faced racial discrimination. This year, South Africa's Ozibini Tunzi took home the Miss Universe crown, making her the first black woman to do so since 2011. Her win was significant for multiple reasons. For one, she wore her hair natural, taking a stand for antiquated beauty standards for black women. For another, she spoke out on representation on how women shouldn't be boxed into one type of beauty. And I want to, them to see their faces reflected in mine. Thank you. In 2019, it was the first time in pageant history that all four major titles are held by black women. Miss America, Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, and now Miss Universe. Finally, progress is being made, and women that have been oppressed and othered in the past are finally being celebrated. How the treatment of women has changed. In earlier years, winners of Miss Universe were seen as vapid and were only celebrated for their beauty. Because of this, they were often taken advantage of and treated as lesser than. There were a few instances where contestants were publicly chastised by previous Miss Universe owner Donald Trump. 
one of which was Oksana Fedorova. Oksana was Miss Russia and won the crown in 2002, though the Miss Universe organization agreed that she could keep up her studies in civil law. After she won the crown, Trump fired her for not spending enough time performing her Miss Universe duties. When questioned about this choice, Trump replied that she was absolutely terrible and beautiful but lazy. If that wasn't enough, Oksana also appeared in multiple interviews where she was asked highly inappropriate questions and treated exceptionally poorly. Though she lost her title as Miss Universe, she returned to Russia and now holds a doctoral degree. The second woman that Donald Trump targeted was Alicia Mercado, Miss Venezuela turned Miss Universe. After her win, Alicia gained a bit of weight and Trump forced her to go to the gym. He ridiculed her in front of multiple people which left her feeling utterly humiliated. When campaigning to become president, Hillary Clinton commented on this and revealed that he had even called her Miss Piggy. Alicia ended up becoming a US citizen and cast her first ever vote for Hillary. Since Donald Trump relinquished ownership of Miss Universe in 2015, there have been no other reports of the winners being tormented in this way. Now the organization states that they are run by women for women. On the website, it states that the organization aims to empower women to realize their personal, professional, and philanthropic goals through experiences that build self-confidence and act as catalysts for future success. We celebrate beauty, all forms of it, and provide the tools that help women to feel their most beautiful, confidently beautiful, improvements. Other improvements include the acceptance of transgender contestants. In 2018, Angela Ponce, Miss Spain, became the first transgender contestant, and although she didn't win, her presence inspired the transgender community and made history. She took to Instagram and said, This is for you, for those who have no visibility, no voice, because we all deserve a world of respect, inclusion, and freedom. She stated that she proudly represented her nation, all women, and human rights. Another step in progress has been the acceptance of different sexual orientations. In 2019, Sue Zin Tet of Myanmar became the first openly lesbian woman to compete in Miss Universe. This 21-year-old opened up on a beauty pageant blog where she spoke out about her decision to come out. She stated, It is personally quite challenging, but I feel that I have a greater voice and the best position to promote this cause. Some pageant fans know about it and they still support me, but this is the first time I'm able to talk about it in public. After this, she posted a collage of her pictures alongside a pride flag and became a symbol of hope for her country. In Myanmar, same-sex relationships are illegal and people are persecuted for who they love. In fact, you can go to jail for being gay. In an interview, Zin Tet stated that LGBTQ people in Myanmar do not have equal rights and I want to change that. She believes that if she is open about her sexuality, others will be open too and not be scared to be who they truly are. By opening up on the public stage, she has put herself at risk, but also allowed for the potential for increased inclusivity in the future. We believe that throughout the years, as the creators of the contest progressed and developed, so did the crown that the women were given. We think that the ways in which their design changed symbolized the progress that was made as the contest matured. As a part of the celebration of the pageant's 10th anniversary, the rhinestone crown was designed by renowned jeweler Sarah Coventry. On it, the huge icon of the Miss Universe logo was shown proudly. To us, this crown symbolizes beauty and the female body. In 2009, Diamond Nexus Labs made the Miss Universe crown and set it with around 1,300 gemstones. The designer decided to contain rubies to represent Miss Universe's HIV-AIDS education and awareness program. They were also the first ever eco-friendly jeweler that the Miss Universe organization worked with. As opposed to the rhinestone crown that focused on celebrating the women's beauty, we believe this crown was a step in showing the ideals of the woman who wore it. The newest crown is estimated to be worth around $5 million because of its inclusion of the golden canary diamond that weighs around 62 carats. The designer said that it symbolizes emotion, community, and most importantly, diversity. While in the beginning, every winner of Miss Universe looked like Marilyn Monroe, now the times have changed. We have seen it develop into an organization that celebrates diversity in the forms of women of all cultures and backgrounds. We're excited to see how it will continue to evolve in years to come. What have you seen over the years? Is there anything you'd like to point out? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Taco for more. And if you haven't already subscribed to The Taco, what are you waiting for? Don't forget to turn on notifications because we all know how YouTube can be. And if you're on a mobile device, you can turn on notifications through YouTube settings.